So I'm here together with uh, Kent Eric Hockman, if you could introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, so my name is Kent Eric, um, and I'm the lead hero designer for Heroes of the Storm. I've been working on the game for ooh, five years now. So I'm very uh, excited to, to talk to you guys today about Marion and Ragnaros, mm -hmm. amongst the many other things we announced today. Yeah. Yeah. So we're here at Games or. I almost said games. <laughs> I just got home from now. Just, no, it's, it's been like, a couple of months already. Yeah, yeah. we're at BlizzCon, brother. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh... Gamescom in California, right? <laughs> I mean, the flight was a little longer. It's yeah. like a two-hour drive to Gamescom for me. Anyway, so a whole lot of things, like you said, were announced here. Um, first and foremost, we got obviously two heroes. Uh, if you could introduce them real quick, that'd be awesome. Sure. So first up, we got Varian Ren. He's our first multi-class hero. Um, it, depending on what talents you take, you'll either be a warrior or an assassin for your team. Um, he's, he's pretty fun, exciting to play. He's very much that warrior fantasy from World of Warcraft. Uh, we, we really hope he'll shake up the draft a little bit because when you see that Varian get drafted by your enemy team, you're like, oh, mm -hmm. is that the tank? We don't know. <laughs> um, so hopefully he'll, he'll shake up some stuff. He's also got some really cool talents that we've put into him. Uh, and then, of course, Ragnaros, the Fire Lord, uh, who I think everybody was super jazzed to see slowly emerge from the lava <laughs> this morning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's so cool. Uh, Ragnaros is a very sturdy melee assassin. If, you, if you're a thrall player out there, you'll probably take to Ragnaros like water. Um, and what's really cool is his trait, Molten Core, will let you take over a fort or a keep, um, either an allied one or a dead one, which means you can take over an enemy's dead fort or dead keep to continue the siege on them. So it, it can, you can do some really fun plays where you like force the enemy treat, team to retreat onto their dead fort, but oh, Ragnaros was there and he just took the fort and, <laughs> and you know, yeah. they all just get killed. Um, so he's really exciting. Um, we think he'll be really good on those uh, PVE maps like Battlefield of Eternity, Infernal Shrines, where there's a big uh, sort, uh, push coming in there because all of his Molten Core abilities do, uh, I think, 75% more damage to, to minions, mercs, and monsters. So, right. So he's really good on those PVE maps in, in addition to just, you know, he's, he's Ragnaros. He's a raid boss. He's yeah. <laughs> I was really curious how you were ever going to, like, introduce, you know, a raid <laughs> boss into the game. Yeah. Like, how do you go about designing something like that? Because I thought about it for a long time, right? Like heroes like Deadwing, like Ragnarok. Right. How, how you? They're just so big. Yeah. Right. No, you, I mean, he's actually not that yeah. big in game. But right. Like, I mean, like, like we well, did Asmodan, and you know. Yeah. Right. He's really like a fifth of the size of how he should be. You know, our scales <laughs> are all over the place because compared we have to like to, Diablo, yeah, exactly. Like, he's huge. <laughs> you know, but we have to be very sensitive to the fact that we are a top-down game, and you know, we want the. You know, we don't want half your screen to be freaking Asmodan and his, you know, gold nipple, right? Like, we want you to actually see the game that's going on. And so we have to, you know, take liberties with scales. And so, but when it comes to these raid bosses, they're so right. iconic for their size, right? And so with Ragnaros, our, our first idea was actually to have him replace the core. And that you were a core hero, and you just sat there at the core, and you could summon the Son of Flame out in the battle, and then, you know, sun, move, you know, you just hear uh -huh. Ragnaros whisper, and we're like, oh, that could be really cool. And then we played with that for a few weeks, we took it to the team, and we had things kind of working, and the team was like, yeah, this sucks, I don't feel like I'm Ragnaros. And I'm like, we're like, ah, oh, right. dang it, all right. Um, and so we, we then tried having you move the core, like the Ragnaros could submerge and, you know, emerge out in the middle, but that really raised a lot of questions, like, so the core is there now. So we can lose the game because he submerged and then it died, or like, what happens trolls, if like. they're pushing and then he submerges? Can we still attack it? Like, you know, it, it was, it was a hot mess. Uh, it lasted for two days of play test <laughs> before we're like, yeah, kill it. Uh, but what we really liked is seeing him in the battlefield, and so we're like, all right, well, we need to get him in there. And it, but he's got to be big. So where can we put this big thing? And then we, we looked at the forts and keeps, and we're like. Well, A, that's really interesting strategically, but B, like that's a footprint that's you know pretty big in the game yeah. blocked out. And so if he just sits there, like he can be big, not block anything that wasn't he wasn't already blocking that the fort and keep wasn't. And so that's kinda we, we kinda stumbled into it after the, trying a lot of other mm -hmm. things and failing. We're we're very much a try, fail, try, fail, try, hey we figured it out <laughs> kind of company. That that makes the that makes the design really difficult though, because you make oh, yeah. How, how, like, how, what's like the, the, the time process? So, like normally how, how we have about uh, 12 weeks for a hero. Ragnaros may have taken about 24, <laughs> or maybe, yeah, I think he was I'm about not 20. Even surprised, like. Yeah, he, he bled way over time. I felt really bad for our art staff because we're supposed to get done and then they're allowed to come in and actually make the art because they don't want to make any art until we know what we're doing. Because right. Otherwise, that's a huge waste. You guys like, no, 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 we're not going to do the core after Right, because like, <laughs> you know, it's really easy for us to put in an ability and throw it out the next day, and, and we're not really attached to it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very much like a prototype, but like an artist creating something, like that, that takes a lot of work and takes a lot of energy out of them, and so we, we're, you know, we try to be very respectful for it. So when the art team started getting on Ragnaros, we were like, well, we have this two things that we know will ship. <laughs> 
and that's about it. And they're like, really, that's it? We need more. <laughs> and so we, we we did some you know negotiating to try to figure out what's the best way to mm-hmm. to move forward. Because yeah, we were we were way over the line on him. But it's much. BlizzCon, man, and everyone's like, well, we do want to do the best BlizzCon hero, so. Uh, thankfully, our staff was very supportive, but I think we redlined them a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When, I, when I first saw the trailer as well, I thought it was just, you know, Varian, and it just happens to go up against one of the raid bosses, right? It just right. seemed appropriate, and then yeah. it just slipped in there that, oh yeah, right, Reckon Rose is available as oh, well. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we've, added, we've added two new heroes, Varian and Ragnaros. <laughs> what? <laughs> right, yeah, no, yeah. I like how people absolutely freaked out. All right, uh, so good. that's Ragnaros. Um, very cool hero, very exciting to actually see him in the game as well. So, so let's talk a little bit about Varian as well, because I'm kind of curious, right? Because everyone keeps saying, like, hey, he's a multi-class kind of hero, but I, I keep thinking back to Karazim. Right, right, absolutely. And I was wondering, how, how are you going to, like, make it so that he will actually be multi-class? Because right now, obviously, everyone just rolls on Karazim, just a healer. Like, right, technically, he can, he can damage, but... Yeah, yeah, but no one, <laughs> everyone wants him to you heal, don't really right? Want it, so right? that's the thing, is that I think, actually, statistically, his damage isn't that bad it's just you feel like you're missing something right and so yeah. that was part of the variant with his development in, in wanting to do this we we realized right off the gate we wanted to make we wanted to label him as multi-class so that people wouldn't try to pigeonhole mm-hmm. we feel like a lot of the problem that comes with this type of stuff is perception issues so for instance mm-hmm. in the north american meta it's perceived that you must have one support one tank and three deeps whereas in north korea it's pre- or, I'm sorry, south korea mm-hmm. Um, when they play, it's very much perceived that you know you run double tank. What are you talking about? Right? You right. got to run a tank and a bruiser, right? And then they of course roll right over North America and they're left scratching their heads, right? Like, oh, what's going on here, right? And so we wanted to just basically, right? Hey, you know, it's probably a perception issue. Let's just tackle it right then and there. We also really wanted to push it more. Karazim keeps a lot of his identity regardless of which trait he picks at level one. He still gets his heal on W. He can still pick either seven sided or divine palm. Like you can right. go iron fist and divine palm. And you're, st- you're mm-hmm. still kind of a big healer for your team, right? Um, and so, Karazim is, is, well, I'd say he's much more of like a hybrid. Uh, right. right. He has a support that can, can do some damage if you really need it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you, you do need it. You yeah, can, it's like a 50-50 sometimes, right? right? Yeah. Uh, whereas Varian, no, no, we want to say, listen, when you make this choice, you are hard committing. And so that's why when you pick Taunt and become a tank, you gain base health and you lose attack speed. When you pick okay. Colossus Smash, you gain damage and you lose some health. When you pick Twin Blades of Fury to go that rapid attacker, you gain attack speed, but you lose attack damage. So we're actually fiddling with your base stats when you mm-hmm. make these choices. Um, and part of that is because we also wanted to help sell that, that artistic look, because we, we're changing your silhouette yeah, yeah, yeah. As, a, as, a, as a character. We wanted to sell, like, hey, that's a big deal. And so that's why I, I, he's kind of like a step above that. Now, at the same time, we looked at Karazin, and we're like, well, we got to do, we at least got to, let's do another pass at him to make him, to brush him up. And so... Mm-hmm. Uh, with um, in the next, I don't know if it's in this patch or the Ragnaros patch, but Karazim does have a talent update coming. Uh, okay. we're, we're buffing Iron Fist. It's going to not only do the bonus right. damage, it's also going to give him move speed so that way he can stick to the targets that he's punching. Um, we're giving him a new tier of talents at level 4 that are all called Mystic Allies. Um, there's a Spirit Ally that kind of functions like a healing ward. You can drop it and it'll heal allies. There's an Air Ally that kind of functions like a scouting drone, but it's on a much lower cooldown and multiple mm-hmm. charges. And then there's an Earth Ally that will uh, block uh, basic attacks for your allies that stand near it. Um, but what's really cool about the allies is that Karzim can dash to them. So he can throw it over a wall and dash it to get away. Or um, oh, okay. with like the, the scouting one in particular, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really fun because you can, with the two charges, you can go boom, dash, boom, dash, and like just cover great ground uh, really That's quickly. Awesome, yeah. So we're hoping to see some playmaking. Um, and then also uh, the Way of the Hundred Fist talent, which is, I think, the mm-hmm. coolest talent that nobody ever takes right now. Mm-hmm. It's a heal radiant dash to an enemy and just like, you know, volley him with a bunch of blows. Right now, those are all like um, spell damage blows that don't interact with this trait at all. We're changing them to all be basic attacks. It's six basic attacks right. that do half damage. So they'll proc his trait. So you'll get two Iron Fist procs or two yeah, Transcendent yeah, yeah, yeah. procs or two Insight procs right off of that uh, one dash. And so... Uh, and we did some some shuffling and some cleaning up of his other talents, and uh, we're actually really excited for his his rework. That's uh, our talent revamp, I should say. Mm-hmm. That, that should be coming out either November. Or I don't, I can't remember which date. Yeah, okay. it, it's in one of the bills. You're, you're already sure. working in February, right? Like <laughs> February, <laughs> shoot, no, I'm in June already, buddy. <laughs> can't imagine. Can't yeah, imagine. We're we're. <laughs> Varian was. We started on Varian in March. If that gives you a sense. All right, it'll be like t- twelve weeks and he's it's, done, it's, so it's, it's been a while. It's, it's like, about nine nine months in advance. <laughs> All right, yeah, okay. that gets pretty But Karazim, yeah, so uh, yeah, I have a, people will tell me, like, 
hey, so when's this coming out? And I'm like, I genuinely don't know. <laughs> You're I, like, like I, just, I thought it was already out. Like, what? yeah, like you know, that, oh, that's a funny thing. So like Artanis, I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, yeah. We, we're doing. Um, we're gonna allow him to use his uh, warp prism, that swap mm -hmm. tool, while he's blade dashing. We've been play testing that internally for at least two months now. Yeah. To the point where I'm so used to it now that I'll be on live. I'll be in here. <laughs> You're pressing E and it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, well, no, it's more like I have an outline Artanis who, like, I see him, or an uh, enemy Artanis, I'll see an enemy Artanis dash, and I'll be like, oh gosh, he's gonna, wait, he can't. Oh, that's right. And, you know, like, cause I'm so used to our play test where it's like, I see that dash and I'm, like, terrified that the phase prism's coming. Like, it, Artanis is going to wreck some faces when that, when that revamp goes out the door because people are not going to expect it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. it's so cool. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool, though, how, like, all of the existing heroes get changed as well. Yeah, yeah, so we, we, we definitely, like, we love... We're getting smarter as a team. So, mm -hmm. like, we've gone through, like, three or four different talent flosses just in the last two years we've, before we... Yeah, it's noticeable we've, as well, we've settled yeah. kind of on this one for the past six months or so. We call it, like, apples to apples, oranges to oranges, where mm -hmm. we isolate a tier against itself... Um, it'd be like in Hearthstone, you kind of compare like a piloted shredder. You compare other four drops against it because right. that's what it's the four drop slot in your deck. And likewise, mm -hmm. we want to compare other level seven talents to that level seven talent, for instance. Okay. And so we, we try to isolate each tier and be like, okay, in order for the balance guys to actually do their job right, let's have every talent focus on the same aspect of this hero. So they either mm -hmm. all increase that hero's survivability or DPS or whatever that hero does. And then we can tune each one. We, we, we try to set up each talent to be good in different use cases. So, mm -hmm. hey, this is good on these battlegrounds, or this is good against these team comps, or this is good when you're super behind or super ahead or whatever. But if we, if we can tune each talent for those cases, we can make sure that they're always all viable just in each situation, rather than it feeling like, oh, I have to go as talents. I think we have too many talents in the game where it's you get to that tier and you're like, well, I have to go this. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah, would yeah. I go anything else, right? And so I... I it's our goals as, as a design team to be like, no, we want you to always evaluate every tier, to look at the team, look at the battlegrounds, and feel like you can make a meaningful choice about what mm -hmm. that talent choice is. So, um, yeah, and so as we've been upgrading these philosophies, we look back at our older heroes, and we go, <laughs> dang, we really screwed up there. And so, you know, it's part of why we're doing a lot of the, the talent revamps, and we're constantly listening for community feedback. We want to know when we go too far. I think, like, mm -hmm. Vala went, like, just up to the line where if we'd done, like, one more change, I think there would have been pitchforks. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't change Vala! It's like, oh, sorry! Yeah, it's, you know, so, people played it for so long. Right? Yeah, exactly. We don't want to We don't want to reset skill masteries too much, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we do want to continue to, to polish the game. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's funny because, like, half the audience would be like, don't change my hero, and the other half is like, please make it better. And it's yeah. like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so... I'm, I'm, I'm like on either end of those sometimes because yeah. I love playing Zagara like the, the Zagara yeah. like she was in the past but it's just you know the same the same talent you pick every single game and yeah. it doesn't really matter all too much right. maybe some endless creep here and there but other than that you know you just, yeah you always went the same build you right? always went the same she, build I think and, right before her rework went out she had the worst we have an Excel it's our talent health where we, we actually we look at all of our internal stats mm -hmm. and we see who has the worst talent pick rates as a sum right and she was the unhealthiest tree right before yeah no rework. I can totally imagine like everyone yeah. just picked the it same was, and now I think she actually has um, some, some decently better um, mm -hmm. better diversity. And more importantly, what we can do is as we continue to gather more data, we can realize, you know what? This talent just is doing 10% too much damage. Just tone it down by 10%. And now we're in a better pick rate state. So we, we've set ourselves up to better be able to adjust talents after we do these revamps. Right. So, that's so you're just keeping track of like all the picks in every yeah, single match. Absolutely. And just well, we exactly. basically have this like internal page we just go to and be like, hey, give me this task for this hero. And like there's a ton of little filters we use right. on it. Like, cause, we try to we try to isolate people who are experienced with the hero at a high MMR and are playing in Hero League. And so, mm -hmm. it's funny when you start to apply all that, you actually really narrow the, the list down. And we want to get at least like two to ten thousand games in order to really get a good grasp on. Right. Do we have enough statistics for this to be statistically relevant? So, are you are you ideally looking for like a, an even split in every single tier, or is that not really like the? I don't even goal, like. But... I, I yes, I think if I could wave a magic yeah, wand, everything could, would be perfect. Would, right? Right, right. I don't think that's even possible. Mm -hmm. But we we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer the funniest is that every now and then we'll get two talents or like two heroics or a tier where the most picked talent is actually the losingest talent <laughs> like I think oh really like a uh, pro tip you, to you, you have like an example right or uh, yeah so that's what I say pro tip to you guys uh, if you're playing Vala uh, I know you love the new Reign of Vengeance I love it too <laughs> Strafe has a slightly higher win rate. <laughs> I'm just going to say. Right, but it's, right, but it's, right. it's funny. Um, but like technically oh, it has more potential. Right. right? So oh, like, oh, this is the best. So shortly after Zul shipped, I think we had like 
people banging on a door is poison nova this, poison nova that. Right. How could you make a heroic this strong? This right. is insane. <laughs> rawr, 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 rawr. You've broken the game. And then we go and we look at the data. And yeah, it's picked two to one, three to one over skeletal mages, but its win rate was like 10 percentage points lower. Like, Zul had like a 62% win rate with poison nova and a 52% win rate. I'm sorry, 62 with skeletal yeah, mages, 52 yeah, yeah, yeah. with poison nova. We're like, Wow, this hero is really balanced. <laughs> if you go Poison Nova, he's really broken. If you go Skeletal Mages, and yeah, everyone like ninety percent like, of the games are like. Poison, but it's like, no, we don't. We need our Skeletal Mages, but you guys will. Get right one. now, it's fine. Like <laughs> nobody, right. nobody complains about it. Really, not, yeah. Not so like. we, we actually did sneak some nerfs into um, uh, to, to Skeletal Mages because we had to. Like, yeah, people yeah, yeah, started, yeah, yeah. Eventually, right. it took like three or four weeks. I, I thought you meant the other one for a second. Yeah, like, no, no, no. no. We, <laughs> people started to catch on, and real, and, and you know what helped a lot is pros. Mm -hmm. everyone, everyone would be like, why are the pros always taking Skeletal Mages? And then finally the voice of reason would come and be like, because it's a better heroic. Mm -hmm. And they're like, alright, finally, the, the jig is up, we got another <laughs> Skeletal Mages now. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah, was yeah, just yeah. really funny. And, you know, that was, uh, what, People like April, play May. the specialist as like a damage dealer to begin with, and yeah. then, you know, to figure out it's not actually the ideal way to play it. Right, like, well, yeah, it, this... Yeah, player percent. It's so funny. Like we have the weirdest job in the world because a lot of the time we're not <laughs> fighting actual. Sounds pretty fun. Though. <laughs> we're fighting perception. Oh, it's it's hard because uh -huh. people get you know certain opinions stuck in their minds, and it's like, you no, know, I I just need you to think differently for a second. No, I can't. It's always this. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is that you know I fall into this all the time too. Like I, um, you know, there's certain heroes I always take the same talents, even though I have the stats, I see them, I know it's the same one, right? But I gotta go that talent, right? You know? Right, right. Because at some point in time, you also just get used to that play style, and so you're like, well, if I yeah. take that talent, yeah, it might be the even win rate, but I'm not used to it. Like, Reign of Vengeance is such a good example for that, I guess? Cause yeah. it can be interrupted, and, you know, yeah. you can technically win the game with it, so yeah, no, you I feel mean, like a playmaker. Like, so here's the deal, like, Reign of Vengeance's win rate is still well within, like, so we want win rates to be within 5 percentage points of 50, uh -huh. so 45 feet out. Reign of Vengeance is still totally fine, bro. Like, it's, it's, mm -hmm. I think it's at, like, 47 or 48, so it's not bad. It's just straight flat 53, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I, I don't know that those are the actual numbers. No, Please don't I, quote I me on that. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but but it, it's something like that. And so they're both totally acceptable. It's just it's just funny that everyone is, you know, picking rain. I think because it's more fun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you just, feel like you can make the play yeah, right there when you win the game, right? Like, right? You, you, know, you can like, hit several people and you yeah, win right oh, there. Oh, and, I did it, right? It's totally like it's a stage dive. Or, I'm sorry, a mosh pit, right? Right. Everyone took mosh pit. Stage dive was actually really good for Everyone took Mosh Pit and they didn't realize. And like just now, like people, I think what helped a lot is we moved Echo Pedal earlier and gave it bonus damage to Minions Emerge. Probably too much. Uh -huh. But you know, we, we did all that stuff and people already realized like Stage Dive is really good. And it's like, yeah. You know, but the, but the thing is, that at the end of the day, still one really good Mosh Pit can just end the game. It, it's people, like people are for the Wuma Combos. Like that's really. Is the, is, the, yeah. is the pinnacle. I think she's actually one of our lowest win rate assassins, but she's still like one of the hot, most contested uh -huh. picks. And you know, I think. <laughs> Players, uh, well, I saw this on our Reddit earlier. Players were like, finally, like, listen to all you people yelling at us for banning Lee Ming. Listen, yes, we know she's not a high win rate. We just don't want to fight her. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just so demoralizing when yeah. know, she changed that. Yes, we know she loses more games than she wins. But it's just. But like every 10th game, yeah. you absolutely mur get yeah. murdered by Li Ming, right? And, and so same it's, with like Sylvana. It's like, it, right. it can just yeah. be really snowballing. So like, it's, it's a, as it's game designers were like, well, What's more important, an even win rate or uh, a feeling of the game being good? Mm -hmm. and, the, and the answer is both. Right. Right. Like we 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 sometimes lean this way for esports, we lean this way a lot. Uh -huh. um, but for for most play, we, we we need to lean this way. Things need to feel fair, and so it's it's striking that balance of like, well, how far can we push that line? Yeah. And so it's. Yeah, it's a fun job. It's also very trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't actually consider like player perception being that big of a deal oh, where people yeah. just. Uh, Especially on it's also like game. old talents that like haven't been changed in a long time yeah, where people obviously. Oh, but I'm used to telling you, dude, you and three other dudes. Yeah. <laughs> I got the stats. There are three guys who picked this talent, <laughs> and so. I can totally imagine. So I had another question about uh, Varian as well. Like. Okay. So say um, you're not playing like draft mode, or you know you're yeah, just you simply queuing match. up to yeah. quick match or whatever. Um, how are you gonna like? Make sure that if you know he's obviously categorized as a warrior, how are you gonna make sure that no, you know, he's actually categorized as a multi class hero? Oh, he's actually okay, okay, he's his own type of thing. I now that being oh, said, right. I think on the back end, I can't remember which quick match looks at him as it might be assassin. I don't, I don't actually right. know. I need to take that back to the team and be like, hey, what are we? But thankfully, right. that's a server back end change we can make without patching the game. Mm -hmm. so we can oh, I saw on the official page it was like a melee warrior, so I was like, ah. Oh, did it say that? Like, oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's, I'm mistaken. It could definitely it, be. It's but... supposed to say warrior, assassin, or multi class. Um, All right. We may not have gotten that out. <laughs> 
Fair enough. That's, no, a little, it, that's a little egg on the face, right? There. Like, oh, does it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We, sh- we should fix that. No, but he is, he's both melee and warrior. Oh, I'm sorry. He's both melee and warrior. He's both yeah, warrior yeah. and assassin. In fact, uh, for your daily quests, he counts for both. If you're playing quick match and you pick uh, Varian, if you have both mm-hmm. uh, a warrior and assassin, oh, wow. he counts for both. You'll get you'll both okay. both credit. So. All right, yeah, so my question was, like, how are you going to make sure that you aren't forced into the role of, like, a warrior yeah, that, at that, that point, right? That's so. why I need to go ask the guys, like, hey, what are we classifying as? I, I assume the safer thing would be to classify him as an assassin so that mm-hmm. they can feel free. Because it doesn't hurt to have a second tank. Um, I, I know some oh, yeah. people would come and yell, like, yes, it does. Like, no, it really doesn't. Korea, Korea showing it. Yeah, Korea, Korea would really <laughs> beg to differ with you. Uh, but actually, at low level, we'll play it. That might not be, I don't know. Anyway, I think it's safer to classify him as an assassin, but I'm not sure what we're, what we're doing there. But that definitely is... Um, Mm-hmm. I, I want to say that we would do that, but I'm not 100% sure. All right. So I'll get back to you. <laughs> sure, sure. So there was like a rumor going around as well of like splitting up the different categories of heroes, um, say like specialist, but then splitting up, for example, warrior and bruiser or warrior yeah. and guardian and whatever. Yeah. Is that still something you guys are looking into? Absolutely. Or that... I, actually, that, that's actually one of the key splits I think we would make one day is splitting warrior into mm-hmm. like tank and, a, and bruiser. I don't know if we call them that. Overwatch calls a tank, right? At the, yeah, they, they, they are. A, they are calling tanks. They call it tanks. Tanks. It, it would probably no. It, yeah, they're just tanks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, it's such a it's such a gamer term. If you're like right. totally not into it, you're like, what do you mean it's a tank? That's, that's <laughs> yeah. the thing that rolls on the ground. It's and like Sergeant Hammer, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> right. Like, it's like we got a tank. It's Sergeant Hammer. Like no, <laughs> yeah. guys, that joke is. We have the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think we would split that one, and we'd probably split support into healer and support. Um, and right. Like that way, we could move Taronda and Tassadar off into there, and we'd probably move Vadiv off into support as well. Um, I, I think that's what we would do. That's our current discussion. I don't uh-huh. know when we'll do this. I mean, shoot, it may be like November of next year, and you're here asking me the question. I'm like, oh, it's going on next week. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but it, that's something that we do want to do. And, and Varian would still be a multi-class hero, and we would just reclassify yeah, yeah, yeah. which classes he's not multiple of. So. Yeah. yeah okay. So that makes that makes it so much more complicated. Just as like, <laughs> yes, it does. Because yeah, yeah. if you gotta have like, well, you can't have any more of. Well, you could technically have more than five roles, but that would make the queuing and all that really complicated. So. Well, I mean, so what we yeah. like, we're really we'd just be really loose in the cooling. It, we'd either be like, hey, either both teams get one healer or they don't. Right. Okay. Because quick yeah, match can have no healers. Fair I've, enough. Yeah. Those games are kind of hilarious. <laughs> they make me realize how. Or, or frustrating. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> hilariously frustrating. It's really the, the term. It's funny with no healers, the games end up dragging out to like thirty-two minutes because everyone has to back mm-hmm. all the time, right? And so. It yeah. gets kind of crazy. Yeah. So. As you like are adding more and more heroes into the game, right? Are you ever like afraid of running out of options? So say, you know, if you're adding 15 heroes a year or, or maybe even more, uh, so like three years down the line, are you ever worried of like, are you, are you already like running into the issue where you're designing a hero and you're like, well, this is kind of similar to one that we've already so, yeah, got. There, like, there's, so there's two cases there. There's one where we run out of heroes and the answer to that is no. <laughs> No, uh, no, no, no. That's, that's, that's the plenty. second, though, the second though is like, hey, aren't you just like, isn't Ragnaros just a different, a better thrall? And that's totally like a question we right. are asking ourselves yeah, exactly. all the time. And so, um, it's, it's so we've been leveling up as a hero design team. We've been getting better at our own jobs. And so one of the things mm-hmm. we do early on in design now for heroes, and we ask ourselves, when do you draft this hero? Right. You know what? What is the comp that this guy's looking for? Why would I draft Ragnaros over Thrall or Thrall over Ragnaros? And so, mm-hmm. right now, we like for instance, in that case, we look at those two heroes. They feel a very similar, role, which is totally fine, as long as there's actually some reason. Because if, if if there is no reason, then people will just draft whichever one is happens to have the higher win rate that month. Right. Exactly. Right? And so with Ragnaros, like that's we, we look at him like he's he should be stronger on maps that are have very PVE focused, so such as mm-hmm. Battlefield of Eternity, Infernal Shrines, where these these pushing you get objectives, to push with you, yeah, and exactly. he can stop the push. Um, he's actually not too bad on Black Earth Bay. I don't think he'll be as great as I think. Like there's this dream scenario where you. <laughs> You go into Molten Core right as Blackheart's about to shoot that fort, and then you absorb all 12 bullets negating their turn. That's, that's actually possible? Like, yes, that uh, is possible. <laughs> that is totally possible. So, so the dream is like, he's like, really yeah. good on Blackheart's, but at the end of the day, uh, Ragnaros has to be alive, his trait has to be off cooldown, and right. he has to be near that fort as Blackheart just got turned in by the, yeah. like, the, the number of conditions. So like, I actually don't think he'll be super He'll, he'll probably Black be bad, I'm like much better on the other over Ragnaros yeah. on Blackheart's, but when it comes to like, Infernal Shrines, I take Ragnaros over there. So, we, we look at, um, mm-hmm. hey, what are the draft reasons for this hero? And so, like, with a lot of, basically every hero you'll see come in 2017 will have come with the mindset of, like, okay, when do I draft this hero? Uh, who, is, who does it share similarities with? How do we make sure that this hero has its own niche? Because, you know, the Nexus is getting more and more crowded. Exactly. Right? And so like, everyone still needs to have room at the table. And so we're, we're doing that. And then as we're doing uh, revamps to heroes, 
we're asking the same question. Hey, so um, when we do this Artanis revamp, when do you draft Artanis? You know, right. we're, we're walking through that exercise, you know, regularly now with every hero to make sure that everyone has their own spot and no one's just kind of taking up too much space. Like right now, I think ETC is probably taking up too much space. <laughs> the camera totally just dropped just now. Nobody saw that. Anyway. So how do you make sure that heroes still get picked, even if you've got like a gazillion abilities? Right, so you know, this is something we talked a lot about with like Ragnaros, we looked at Thrall, very similar. Mm -hmm. and one of the things we, we, we talk about from the beginning of a hero's design now is like, what are the draft reasons for this hero? Who, who do they share draft similarities with? What can we add to their kit or put on there to make mm -hmm. them function differently? So in Ragnaros' case, we, we, case, we look at his trait. It's right. very good on PvE maps, and so we think that you know, he, he should be picked over Thrall on a map like Infernal Shrines or Battlefield of Eternity, whereas on like a map like Cursed Hollow, Thrall might be better for you because he brings more utility. It's just more powerful dark Yeah, dark, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so it's something that going forward, we're going to try to do a better job of making sure that, you know, the newer heroes that come out have a clearly defined, you know, role and a spot for them. And then as we revamp older heroes with our talent revamps, that we make sure that the talents keep those heroes in a specific role for them so that way everybody can have room at the table. All right, awesome. So thank you very much for all of the uh, questions. Great talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. And uh, yeah, hope to talk to you again next year. All right, we'll see awesome. you later then. Cool.